So I should have known that something was kind of wonky about the BMI scale when I was first introduced to it a few years ago when one of my friends who is pretty tall and athletic came back from the doctor traumatized and upset because she'd been classified as pre-obese. It wasn't until more recently that I started to think more critically about the BMI scale, asking where it came from, why do we still use it if it's not a very good measure of health? The answers that I found were kind of disturbing. <laughs> Basically, it goes like this. It's a tool that doctors and the government and insurance companies use to determine someone's health. And the categories are like underweight, ideal weight, pre-obese, obese, morbidly obese. You get the picture. Now, it was originally started by this Belgian mathematician 200 years ago. And he explicitly said, This scale is not intended to measure an individual's health. That wasn't a Belgian accent, was it? F*** it. So, tool isn't designed for this usage, yet here we are using it anyway. Why would, oh my, do y'all smell that? It's like a really pungent smell of corruption coming from that direction. So let's fast forward to the 70s when life insurance companies conveniently start using the BMI scale in order to charge higher premiums for people with higher BMIs. Now fast forward a few more years to 1995 and the government has this panel put together to try to figure out how to diagnose and treat obesity. This panel decides that they're going to diagnose obesity using the BMI scale and that a BMI of 30 is going to decide whether or not you're obese. Where'd the stench come from? So a lot of these panelists making these medical decisions had ties to big drug companies who were coming up with new weight loss pills. This panel strongly advocated that obesity be seen as a disease, which therefore raises alarm around the issue, and they also wanted the standards of obesity to be relatively low. More people would be then using their medication and ka-ching, money in the bank. For one thing, it assumes that weight is a good proxy to health, that just by looking at someone you can tell how their organs are doing. Two, it's just like scientifically wrong. Kind of a fail. The formula squares height for no particular reason. It doesn't account for the muscle fat bone ratio. That's why this dude's classified as obese and this woman's classified as overweight. It assumes that there's one universal weight that's healthy for everyone and it's just not true. <laughs> So why give a shit? Doctors keep using it, which is like, you shouldn't do that. It allows insurance companies, at least till 2014, to charge more money to those with higher BMIs. It allows obesity statistics to be inaccurate and then harder for us to actually deal with the issue at hand. And on a cultural level, it reinforces fat hate and fat fear. Two of my favorite things. It effectively takes our focus off of our health and puts it on our weight. And we're to the point where people are obsessing about weight. It's like really confusing navigating the actual relationship between your weight and your health, which there is somewhat of a relationship, just not the one outlined in the BMI. There's significant money to be made in making people fat, in making people fear fat, and in treating obesity. Diet giants sell you cures for your fat, and then the pharma companies profit off of treating obesity, however they define it. So for where I'm standing, well, sitting. Yes, we continue to use the BMI scale because it allows all these major industries to profit and there's no incentive for them to say we don't want to use this anymore. It's not bad for companies to be able to make a profit but it is a problem when they're profiting off of something that hurts society and hurts people. This is what happens in a society that is built on a system which values things that people have made more than people themselves. Yeah, USA. USA. Mom, oh. What?